It's wonderful to be with all of the hard friends in Australia who are present tonight. And it's an honor and a privilege to share teachings from Enoch, whom you have chosen to come. As I communed with him, he would like to speak about the virtues. And he says, embody God's virtues in your life. Embody God's virtues in your life. He encourages us to have a lifelong study of God's virtues. A lifelong study of God's virtues. And when we do this, we seek to utilize these virtues throughout our life in a very conscious way. We actually master the energies of those virtues to contemplate them, to facilitate their flow within our consciousness, our heart, our mind, and how we can practically apply these virtues spiritually. Now, he says that Mother Mary gave Elizabeth Clare Prophet back in around 1972, a wonderful teaching on the cosmic clock. And part of this teaching was meant to help us to embody God's virtues, which were also called God qualities in our life. And Enoch says that we each have an overarching virtue to embody in a given lifetime. And typically this relates to our sun sign. The sign of the zodiac that appeared in the heavens at the time we were born. Because the sun sign relates to our I am presence and kind of the prime directive of our life. And we will have the tests during our entire lifetime that relate to our sun sign. And we consciously chose our sun sign. We chose when to embody. And we knew that we would have the initiations relating to that astrological sign. So, for instance, for me, I was born January 5th, and so my sun sign is Capricorn, and the God quality or virtue, according to the teachings given by Mother Mary, is God power. So I have to be very cognizant of how I use the energy of God as God power in my life to ensure that I always qualify this virtue appropriately and do not misuse it. And I can assure you I have misused it in the past and I've learned from that experience. And so it is the overarching virtue that I chose in this life when I embodied to allow there to be the initiations on my path and also to utilize as a great virtue of God. So it took a lot of thrust and got power to begin a business, to do my creative work, and to co-found the Heart Center. It took a lot of thrust on that 12 o'clock line. It's the beginning of cycles. So that's one example, and I could probably name 20 or 30 more examples of the opportunities I've had in my life to master this virtue or God quality. We also have a primary virtue to embody each year of our lives and then sub-virtues during each of the 12 months of that year. And this is also important because things shift and change based on 
how we are moving through the astrological cycles in our lives from the time we're born to the time we transcend this plane and hopefully ascend. And what Enoch says is there's also an extra year in utero, the nine months when we were in our mother's womb, plus the three months before that, when we were actually in a type of etheric gestation in which the patterns were set before we were actually incarnate in a physical body outside of our mother's womb. And even during that cycle, it's important to realize that there was preparation and initiation. It's like the foreshadowing. It's like the, the, the preparation. And so we could look and say, okay, to be victorious on the 11 o'clock line, God, victory on the 11 o'clock line with Lord Maitreya, while we have been in that year period before we were actually born as a physical body temple through our mother, we were already beginning the foreshadowing of our life. And in utero, in the womb, we hope to be victorious, and so it actually takes a great thrust to come physically into incarnation, and it's quite a test, and some people don't make it. They're aborted, or their mother has issues, health issues, or we may have chosen to have a health issue to balance karma, and we may not make it into embodiment. Now, as we desire to embody these virtues in our life consciously, we consider these virtues as our goal, our desire, as our aim, so that we can master them all through the initiatic cycles of our life, so that the ultimate is that we have mastered all of them and then we ascend because we have passed those initiations. We have become those virtues and these virtues coexist in our causal body already as the fruits of spirit. We have to simply manifest them consciously, actively, proactively in our life. And when we do master them, the energy of our self-mastery accrues to our causal body and our causal body expands and the virtue body, Enoch says, could be another name for our causal body. He says you could call it the virtue body, the body of all of our virtues, the body of all the good deeds that we've done, yet it's really the virtues of God that we have mastered, that we have become, that we have facilitated in our life. So we call it the causal body, the body of first cause. God created us in his, her image and likeness, and God is all virtuous, so we are meant to be all virtuous. Now we had a class in 2012 that lasted for 12 months. Each month we Went around the clock, Claire Brown facilitated this, and we studied each of the 12 lines, and we attempted to have 12 times the 12, 144 virtues. And so we, we thought about each major virtue or God quality and what other sub-virtues that were part of that greater virtue. And then we attempted to name them and consider them and and talk about how we could actually embody them. Now some of you may or may not have taken that class and it is a free class and it's still available on our website when you go to courses I believe on the home page then you can hold the your cursor over courses and then go to free classes and that's one of the four or five free classes. It was a wonderful 12 months of considering this. Now, yes, we did it in 2012. We could do it again. And this teaching is not meant to just put on the shelf and then 
you study it once and that's it. We can continue to consider our cosmic cycles and then embody those virtues. So we have a prayer in our prayer book. It's called Cosmic Cycles Clearance 6.002. And we've expanded what the summit had as 6.04. And we've added some new things to that version of the Cosmic Clock Prayer. We've added a color. We've added the solar lords, the term solar lords of these hierarchies. We've added the, the parts of the body that relate to the astrology of each line. And we've added the twin flame, if we know the name, of the masters on those 12 lines of the clock. So we've kind of expanded that so that we can actually use that information to even help master our physical body because when we're going through, let's say, the 1 o'clock line of our cosmic clock, when we're 13 or 25 or 37 or 49 or 61 or hopefully if you live long enough, 73 or 85, on that 1 o'clock line, the virtue is God love. And for God love in Aquarius, the parts of the body are ankles and circulation. So we should be very careful when we walk the one o'clock line to ensure that our ankles are taken care of and we have good circulation throughout our body. And circulation is the flow of the blood. It's very important. And what does the blood actually hold in it? Through the ruby color of that blood, the concentrated essence of, of God love which is like pink, but in this case, it's like a ruby color, a dark red, ruby. Our blood is like a ruby color. So we could go through the clock, and you can consider all of these lines of the clock. And for instance, I'm a Capricorn. I have had issues in my life with my knees and some joints. You know, I played a lot of basketball in my youth, and you run down the court, you jump up and down, and... What happens over time is through all of that activity, it takes its toll on the joints, the knees especially, and some of the bones. If you are, let's say, a Taurus, uh, you could have issues with your neck and throat. And so, you know, what is the virtue? God obedience. And what do we say about people that aren't obedient? Well, the Bible talks about the stiff-necked generation, the stiff-necked generation, those who did not obey or listen to God. So they have a stiff neck. They haven't mastered the line of God obedience on the 4 o'clock line of the cosmic clock. If you're a Leo, God bless you. Your test will be your heart, your back, and your spine. So I know Leos who've had problems with their you know, shoulder and, and other things, and a lot of Leos have issues with their heart. So be careful. Guard the heart. Protect the heart. Always express God gratitude for everything if you're a Leo. So you don't get into that cycle of being what we call an ingrate or someone who's not grateful for what they have and they just they cause a lot of displeasure in others' lives if they have a, a sour or a dour attitude, right? We would desire an attitude of gratitude which that attitude of gratitude becomes a be attitude. It's an attitude of divine beingness. So gratitude will help you overcome the initiations of Leo that are upon you. And for instance, in my case, I think I have two or three planets in Leo. And I have to be careful when those planets are aligned with certain other planets and the sun and the moon to make sure that I'm living in that state of God gratitude. Now the science of astrology and the science of cosmic astrology is a spiritual science that we could study our entire life and we're always in the process of moving through these cycles again and again and again. Why? To master ourselves. To become the master of our destiny to master the initiations, 
to master even the subconscious and the unconscious part of ourself so we can tap into the superconscious self which is our god presence our divine self when we embody god's virtues in our life consciously we make life for everyone around us easier <laughs> we're more pleasant to live with we look for the best in others and we see them manifesting their virtues rather than their non-virtues or their sins or their you know the things that they haven't mastered in their life their evil ways their predilections toward darkness when we master all 12 lines of the clock we have to move into that field of joy and presence where we love everyone we don't judge we've mastered the 12 o'clock line we don't judge them we've entered into divine judgment rather than human judgment because the perversion on the 12 is criticism condemnation and judgment right so to master the 12 o'clock line the first line on the clock we have to choose consciously not to be critical or condemn others or be judgmental and it's interesting this is the very first initiation the major initiation on the 12 o'clock line have any of us completely mastered that maybe a few of us here or there some people have no guile whatsoever they never criticize other people never and you know some people who never say an evil thing or a bad thing about anybody they never gossip they just are very pure they live in a state of being undefiled and this is what we all desire these this is the life of the saints so we have to be wary first of all never to criticize and Melchizedek who's very energetically tied to Enoch gave us a warning about that about four years ago in Livingston when he presented a whole series of teachings and we studied with him from spring equinox to summer solstice and one of the very first I think it was the first teaching he gave was a warning again about not being critical not judging or condemning blaming others because that energy will come back to us it will come back to haunt us and as we judge so are we judged right as we judge so are we judged so if you don't desire to be judged then don't judge others it's as simple as that as we embody God's virtues in our life and make life easier and more profound and beautiful for everyone around us the virtues that we embody begin to accelerate and be magnified as we glorify God within our physical temple within our heart our mind our soul our will and as we attempt to glorify God through these virtues our causal body expands our our virtue body we now have that new term our body of virtue or virtue body that expands and now we have more access to spiritual energies to do the greater works that Jesus said that we would do because he went to the Father if you desire greater energy to get more work done go up into your causal body or go within into your causal body your body of virtue access those virtues consider them call them forth use them in your alchemical works or in your daily affairs and try to by being virtuous help others raise others serve others bless others caress others uh, seal others in light resurrect others heal others as we treat each other we treat the Christ and we treat the Christ within ourself so Jesus statement you know as you do it to the least of these my brethren you do it unto me well we also do it Enoch says unto ourself 
the Christ within us. If we crucify others, we are ultimately crucifying the light within ourself too because everything comes back. Everything returns. It's the law of the cycles. The law of karma of cause and effect. Now you know all these truths, yet do we consciously use the cosmic clock and this cosmic cycles clearance call on a regular basis to preempt what is going to transpire in coming cycles? Now, right now we're in Aries for the whole planet. The whole planet is in the cycle of Aries because we're moving through the constellation of Aries as a planet Earth right now. And so the test is to overcome the Martian energies of anger and the ego and argumentation and, and, and all these things. So during this cycle that just began about five, six days ago of Aries, be very careful to put a check on your ego and not try to be, always be right and my way or the highway, or to say, well, you know, this is the only way that things are. That's the perversion of the virtues of Aries, which are God control. So we learn God control by being a great listener, being patient, and considering what others have to say before we snap to judgments and say, oh, no, it can't go that way. I disagree. Uh, let's move on. You know, so consider people's motives, what they're, where they're speaking from, and just attempt in the best way that you can to be considerate, to be loving and considerate in this way. We anticipate the future cycles and we can proactively transmute some of the karma that we are even maybe due to deal with before it lands on our doorstep. So I'm 62, I'm on my two o'clock line. I know that next year I'm gonna be on that three o'clock line. I can, as I'm walking the cycles of my two o'clock line, be cognizant of the fact that I'm ending up, or I'm kind of culminating the cycles in the etheric body, the 12, one and the two o'clock lines of the cosmic clock, and next year I'll be dealing with Aries energies. And I am a Capricorn, so guess what? That's a square to Capricorn. Ooh, watch out. Next year should be an interesting opportunity for me. I'm going to have to be very careful to not let my ego get the best of me, you know, because I'm human too, and I'm, you know, David Lewis is not perfect, and I have initiations, and they're ongoing, just like all of us. So... I will utilize the flame and the virtue of God control to put a check on the dweller, the ego, and subconscious patterns that may arise that I may have to deal with so that I'm pleasant to be with, pleasant to communicate with, and everything can run smoothly, right? So when you look at your cycles and you study your astrology, from the vantage point of Mother Mary's teachings on the cosmic clock, and you begin to proactively look at what you're moving through and what you will be moving through, you can prevent all kinds of problems in your life when you are very conscious of what is coming due, what is coming up, and you get on your knees if necessary, you use the violet light, and you clear yourself, your records, from the past, from past lives, and you ask for these virtues to really hum in your life and to sing in your life and for you to be the master of all elements of your being. All the elements of your being. Now it's interesting that I'm seeing now in the etheric a periodic table of the elements, right? We've studied this in chemistry in high school, the periodic table. And back when I was a kid, there were probably just over 100, like 102. And I think even during my youth, it got up to like 108. I don't even know how many they say there are now. It could be 144. 
I'm seeing that there could very well eventually be like 144 elements of the periodic table, that even those elements could in a sense relate to the 144 virtues. You know, hydrogen is the first element. Uh, you know, one proton, one electron, right? One proton, one electron. Helium, two protons, two electrons. At least in that model that we studied back in chemistry and in physics. So how does this relate to the virtues? I think what it is is that we have these elements even in our physical body, many of them, not all of them, yet they're in the environment. We take in these elements in our food, drawing up from the earth through that food various elements. Some of them descend from the sky. Some are negative and radioactive and can hurt us. Yet when we are spiritually radioactive in a good way, and we have a lot of radiation through love and through our prayers and decrees and we feel the love and the light of God flowing through us, we can counterbalance all the negative elements that are being processed around the planet, throughout the planet, even transmuting old records of the misuse of, of the atom through nuclear fission or fusion and through nuclear bombs and radiation, we can invoke so much light and radiation that we counterbalance even physical radioactivity that's normally harmful to mankind and our flesh, our skin, everything, all of our organs. How do we do this? We accelerate the light within. We accelerate the virtues flowing through us to be this counterbalance. And if enough light bearers invoke enough light as Buddha beings, we can counterbalance any negativity anywhere on the earth by the power of God's virtues flowing through us. And we require to more virtues in our life and to be more virtuous to deal with all of the energies that are floating around the planet that we're all having to deal with now, manifest through the media, manifest through all the perversions that we see happening in the world, and the potential for cataclysms or wars or, you know, what we call acts of God, which really aren't acts of God in the sense that God doesn't desire to punish us. It's our inhumanity toward others that creates the negativity that eventually manifest as storms, earthquakes, floods, fires, you name it. It's all based on our choices. You know, God desires a peaceable kingdom on earth. We can co-create that with God if we choose to embody the virtues. So the end result of leading a virtuous life, all of us leading virtuous lives, is that we do create the peaceable kingdom heaven upon earth again. We do recreate Eden again on earth, and we can have a golden crystal age of enlightenment, freedom, understanding, brother sisterhood, and of course, especially divine love manifesting. That is our goal. So the end result of being virtuous, being saintly, being even holy, is to help bring about this golden crystal age where every man, woman, and child is free in the light, one with God, free in the light, reunited with their presence, and then immortal. So that's what Enoch desired to share tonight, and what I'm going to do now...